Hey, how's it going guys? Domino Paris 21 here, and I'm here just bringing you guys an updated version to my Solus OTT deck. As some of you guys may be aware, this is actually one of my favorite decks in Vanguard. I always enjoy playing this deck, and I've been playing this deck ever since um, it got its last support in set 7, so I've been going through a lot of testing uh, with this deck. But now, uh, we ex now, of course, ever since the release of set 5, we had a new meta change, of course, with cross rides. Uh, being first introduced in the English, and we are going to see even more cross rides in s come set 9. So I got a chance after playing this in a few qualifier events, and uh, I actually had my friend even test this with me at a locals. Um, this is pretty much what I came up with to effectively take on cross rides, and just to be very simple, but very effective. So, let's get to it. So first you have your starter Little Witch Lulu, no changes there. She is really the whole reason why this deck even works. So, gotta run her. Next up for Grade Threes, you have your four Scarlet Witch Cocos, of course. No changes there. She's actually one of my favorite cards in the game. Just I like ponytails. I don't know why ponytails, redheads, and she's actually one of the reasons why I got this Urza, Urza Scarlet Mad. As you see, you know they look kind of the same too. But yeah, four of her, and then you run the one Lone Sakuya. Now in my previous build, I actually um, tried out three Sakuya just because I focus on kind of like exchanging. Uh, skills between Coco and Sakuya, but of course I'm not I'm no longer running Dark Cats or Luckbirds. I just felt like Luckbird was a little in too inconsistent for me for the way I'm trying to build this deck now. And Dark Cats, I think like after discussing about Dark Cats with a few uh, a few of my fellow Vanguard players that play Solus, uh, you know, we talked about saying that Dark Cats usually allow your opponents to benefit from the extra draw power rather than you because you know, decks like Overlord the End, Majesty Lord Blaster, they essentially rely on combo pieces to uh, get their strategy off, such as getting a Persona Blast off or getting their Blaster pieces to use the skill. So it definitely benefits, a lot of times the extra draw power benefits more decks than your own. So the one Saki is fine just to help clean up the field, pick up your starter um, after you ride Coco twice, that's the whole idea with her. So the one is perfectly fine. And then the two great threes is two soufflés. I like the soufflés. I definitely missed it in the deck just because she can consistently hit the numbers you need. Most importantly, put her behind a 7k. She can be able to snipe out those 9k base 12k attackers that cross rides have because 20k columns really hurt this deck. So yeah, that's uh, seven great threes. Next up for the great twos, of course you have your four Oracle Guardian Wiseman 10ks are always going to be very stable and consistent to put in any build. Then you have your three, Battle Sister Mocha. I was previously running four, but I decided to actually take one out to make room for one extra card, which we'll see in a sec. Oh, excuse me, guys. So yeah, Mocha is really important to be that 11k attacker, consistently hit those numbers you need, that 18k plus mark, take on cross rides. And if you put her behind an 8k, she swings for 19. Um, effectively, if you can swing for 19, if one of your Rurgar cons can swing for 19, it will really benefit your deck because it's really important to try and snipe out those uh, potential 20k columns because 10k bangers are very vulnerable in this meta especially now with aqua force out and set nines is right around the corner um depending when you're watching this of course but yeah uh not, it's pretty good she's still really good 8k the 8k body kind of sucks but you know you learn to deal with it and then next up you have your three silent toms of course uh i signed i don't, don't want to run four anymore of him just because uh I mean, well, my previous build, I only ran three, and I decided not to just continue with that number, just because, you know, cross rides make it a little bit harder to for Tom to be very effective, so he's, at that point, he's no longer a win condition, as he used to be. Unless your opponent miss, miss cross rides, then it's business as usual, but he's an excellent rear guard sniper, so he could definitely force out a lot of cards in your opponent, opponent's hand, and a really amazing late game card, one of my favorite cards in the game. And then last but not least, Minion Libra, just to help clean up some spare counter blast that you may not have used for Coco. So she's really good, nice good pressuring card, good 9k body, and a good damage sponge as well. Your opponent, My opponents always tend to target my Libras, so I usually sometimes use her for, the, for those defensive purposes. Then next up for grade 1s, you have your 4 Gemini, of course, 8 Gemini, Gemini, I don't know. Mizaki says Gemini in the anime, so I'm going to say Gemini. But yeah, 8Ks are very important. 4 Chocolats, um, just standard there. So this previously used to be Dark Cats, but I decided to actually go back to Battle Sister Omelets. Just for the main reason is like when you first ride Coco, it's very important to draw to as many ideal attackers as possible just because 
Um, you don't, you're not really shooting to be very aggressive with the deck early on because you need to guarantee that your opponent's going to hit your Vanguard and you with that two counter blast for Coco. So Onless is really good to be that 7k booster and a nice good 10k attacker when you first ride Coco. Um, so she's pretty solid. Like I mentioned earlier with Dark Cats, I don't like Dark Cats. A lot of times in my testing, it ended up benefiting my opponent more than me. And I don't know, I just felt like Omelets are just a safer bet. So I'm just focused more on just simple beat down here, uh, nothing else. And then two uh, Truth Watchers. You previously used to be Luckbird's, but like I said, I felt Luckbird was just too inconsistent. And whenever I had the chance to use Luckbird's skill, I was already in the position to win the game anyway. So it was just more like a luxury card to me. So Truth Watcher just helps continue um, your Coco to become soulless so that she can really hit for good numbers. Uh, so I found that to be very important. And then he hits for 9k, which can really good snipe out like those Burning Horde Dragon clones and whatnot, and has really good synergy with the Omelette. So it can consistently hit for 16. If you're dealing with a cross ride, then just take on their, just take out their rear guards. You can still force out cards from your opponent from that way, but really good solid card. But if you're facing a deck like Overlord at the end, just be careful about uh, leaving this up front, because he's a really weak body at 6k. Maybe if you have like a perfect guard in hand, it's safe. So you just gotta be careful. And then last but not least, two Weather Girl Milks, really important card. Just allows your co your Solus Coco or Sakuya to hit for 23-24, which is very pressuring to the cross ride Vanguard, so it's very important. Um, so two is really what you should run, um, just in case, you know, Kagero snipes out one, you have another one. But yeah, uh, so that's a good solid lineup. Now, before going to triggers, just to mention a few things. Now, yes, I know I'm not playing, I'm not running Imper Imperial Daughter. I don't think Imperial Daughter is that good of a card. I think it's a nice, fun card to use, but I personally don't think it's that good of a card. And when it comes to Promise Daughters, the thing with Promise Daughters is, um, like, if you partner, I think Promise Daughter is best used if uh, you run Dark Cats, just because you're able to supply your hand better, um, especially late game, when you're pushing with Promise Daughters, you can minus out your opponent's hand, which I think, which I think is good, but Dark Cats help benefit that, benefit that a lot better. But I even tried out Promise Daughters previously without the Dark Cats, and I didn't like it too much, and I didn't want to run Dark Cats in the deck, so... I just think that the grade two lineup I have is just pretty, pretty consistent, pretty simple, and uh, that's I think that's how a beatdown oriented deck like this one should be. So it works out fine. You can run Promise Daughters if you like. I just found like Wise Men's to be more like stable and consistent, along with like the Mochas, Toms, and such. And then last but not least, for the deck that is, um, for for these, for these, twelve crits, and four heal. So I tried like putting draw triggers back in, but the 12 crits are really important because like I mentioned your vanguard your all your vanguards are gonna be at 10k so it's very very vulnerable to power columns and 10k vanguards are very weak nowadays so I wish I wish Coco could be 11k but you know we can't get what we want but with with 12 crits it's very important just for the fact is that the sooner you can get you can push your opponent to that four or five damage mark the better position you'll be so as long as you guard effectively to take advantage of that, if you're able to uh, crit your opponent early enough, then you basically you basically win the game as long as you as long as you do that. I mean, twelve crits is still intimidating because like if you write Coco for the first time and draw your like three cards and you haven't drawn to hardly any crits, you pretty much know you're gonna you're gonna probably hit a pretty devastating twin drive too. So it's a pretty scary deck in that perspective. But yeah, there you have it, guys. So that is my newly revised uh, Solus OTT deck. As always, feel free to comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to ask me any questions you like. And I know I haven't posted any matches as of late. Uh, I've just been really busy with me and my friends. So I'm going to definitely try to get to them as soon as possible. So try just to leave comments down below with any suggestions of matches you'd like to see. But yeah, earn that, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya.